with your boy Ancient Albatross here as a disembodied voice today. Uh, but today uh, we have the Cypher Unlimited crew as usual. We have Spigs 18, we have Alpha Dean or Dean. And uh, just as a quick reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to follow us here on Twitch and subscribe to us over on YouTube. We just hit a thousand subs, but we're trying to push ourselves to even greater heights, so every sub is fully appreciated. So uh, without further ado, Dean, what are we doing here tonight? Hey, tonight is a nice show. We've got a great interview with three great guys. You know, one face that you all know, none other than Bear Wider from Monty Cook Games. But we also have uh, Stephen James Scares. Bingo. All right. First and time. Andy Scares uh, here from Station 151. There's going to be a new podcast coming out. So Andy Scares is a writer, software engineer, and one of the creators of the speculative science fiction web series, Station 151. His work appeared in an anthology of Cthulhu Radico and will appear in future issues of the Poetry and Short Fiction magazine. Stephen James Scares is a writer, voice actor, and one of the creators of the speculative science fiction web series known as Unknown Transmissions. He's also a contributor to the companion series of one, Station 151, his printed work appears in a number of anthologies, including Rigor, Rigor Mortis and Cthulhu Erotica. So, and of course, like I said, Bear, graphic design, 30 years of experience, our old friend from MCG, I <laughs> mean, a wide range of experience from production work, graphic designs, interactive designs, developing illustrations and animation, video production, and so much more, you know, and... You know, now audio added, drama producer. <laughs> there you yeah, go. <laughs> now, now we're going to add audio design to that as well. You know, we all know about Wombat <laughs> Studios tackling a variety of projects, you know, and clientele. You know, we really don't have to do a great introduction. But, you know, with that being said, you know, welcome to Cypher Unlimited, guys. Welcome, welcome. You know, and... uh the three of them have this Kickstarter coming up. It's actually live. I shouldn't say coming up. It's live right now for a science fiction or horror audio drama called Station 151. And we're going to talk all about that tonight. And so on you, buddy. Hey, guys. Yo, Anthony, Steve, Bear, welcome to the CU. It's awesome to, to have you here. Um, we kind of, our audience, Bear's been on, I don't know, this might be the fourth or fifth time he's been on our show. So I, I think everyone pretty much knows Bear and what he does, but um, Andy and Steve, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and your backgrounds before we get started on the um, podcast? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, my name is Andy Scarce. My brother Steve Scarce here. Uh, we um, uh, I I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm a, professionally I'm an engineering manager for a Starbucks. I, uh, I run the engineering team that does all of the iOS applications for all of our retail stores. But uh, in the evenings, uh, I spend my time writing. Um, I've, uh, we Together, we've spent the last 10 months working on this, uh, this project, Station 151. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a wonderful pro uh, process so far. Steve? Uh, my name is Steve Scaris. Um, I'm uh, from Kansas City. Go Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've been a writer. For, uh, for as long as I can remember, really, uh, I, I'm a content strategist. Uh, I, I basically sell my services to businesses large and small to help them with their blogs or website copy, press releases, social media messaging. So I write for a living. Uh, we, uh, we kicked around the idea of this kind of joint uh, speculative fiction story, uh, Station 151 and Unknown Transmission back in 2009. Uh, I think it was November of 2009. We wrote on it for a few years, uh, attracted quite the tidy little fan base across the world, and then we transitioned on to other projects. And it was Bear who uh, gave it new life. He came to me earlier this year, in February, and he says, "I've got this crazy idea. Let's turn let's turn the story into a podcast." And and I said, "Man, that sounds really great, but no, 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 that was that's a lot of work, man. No." And then five minutes later, I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's totally do that. Let's get Andy on board. Let's kick the shit out of this. This is going to be awesome. So uh, Bear really is, is the one who who brought this thing to life. If he, if he hadn't hit us up, this thing wouldn't be a reality. And 
and uh, we wouldn't have uh, wasted 10, 10 months <laughs> sitting in closets, <laughs> recording lines and agonizing over script details and trying to come up with clever voices and marketing. So, but it's been a hell of a ride and, uh, and we're, we're super excited to be here uh, uh, along with you guys. And this is, this is a thrill. So thank you for having us. Bear can be rather convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I try. It's kind of funny because Bear's the quiet guy, but somehow yeah. he's yeah. insidious. <laughs> he's the little voice in the back right. of your head. Do this thing. It'll be great. <laughs> so, Andy, you want to say anything that people know a little bit about you? He's, he went first, Dean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did. We can do it again. <laughs> Don't pay me no mind. So, let's get into I got a question. My question is, um, first of all, you guys created this story originally is a web fiction blog called Station 151 and Unknown sure. Transmissions. Now, with that idea that each blog would tell one side of a larger science fiction story that culminated in a clash between the two main characters, why and when did you guys decide to turn it into an audio drop? Uh, you saw it anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm just that convincing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the audio drama thing really, it, it came around. I mean, uh, you guys are certainly uh, uh, quite aware of it at this point. Um, but, uh, you know, we uh, kickstarted this small little project uh, earlier this year called um, Old Gods of Appalachia. Um, uh, it's a really exciting podcast itself. Uh, obviously has a huge amount of followers, very rabid fan base. It's, it's, uh, it's really awesome. Uh, they're great people to work with. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I, uh, I saw what they were doing. Um, and on top of that, I had done some audio work for our application, uh, the darkest house last summer, last summer. Yeah. A uh, year and a half ago. Um, uh, and I've done audio work here, here and there, um, prior to this. Um, but usually it's like really small stuff. And even the darkest house stuff was really small stuff, but it gave me this taste of, you know, it's really fun to kind of push audio around. Uh, it's, it's just a, such a different experience than doing graphics, doing pixel based stuff, doing video. Um, and, uh, and I just felt like, you know, this is something that I really enjoy. I, I really enjoy gear. <laughs> and so it, it kind of uh, gets me into buying gear or, or continuing to buy gear and justifying the gear that I've bought. Um, but, um, but so, yeah, I just, you know, I, and I thought because of the way that they had created their blog series, um, it, it was serialized, you know, it's, it's a, a smaller consumable chunk uh, every few days or week or whatever, the way it's told, I thought would translate well into a podcast in the way in which um, we would be able to deliver the episodes. Um, of course, we're, it's, it barely follows, I think, what, what has been written at this point. It's been completely reimagined, um, you know, and that's, and that's not my story to tell at this point. But, uh, but I thought, yeah, I thought this would be a cool thing to do. And, uh, you know, obviously we're doing it. You know, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say to you guys, you know, it's really funny you now that we're talking about it. And it just kind of hit me that, you know, this, the podcast is like the reinvention of a radio show, you know, yeah. you know, I, I used to, I used to consume old radio shows when I was a kid, you know, my, my father, you know, pointed me to him and I listened to like, you know, the whisperer and the shadow and all those old, those mm -hmm. old serials. And now you guys are bringing it back with this podcast. So it's like, you know, coming full circle, even though we live in a world digital and, CGI and everything else is still a really nice place to be able to dive back into your imagination. Yeah, yeah it really is. I remember like, staying awake as a child and listening to uh, audio dramas. Like I remember listening to like Hitchhiker Gu Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on the radio back then. Yeah, like the yep. BBC one. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. It was fascinating. I I'm so glad Bear brought this to us. You know, came up with this idea because. You know, we, we didn't finish the blog. Uh, it was, I think we had like, what, a novel or a novel and a half worth of, of writing done, right? Oh, yeah. Across Amazing. both blogs. And because we never really finished telling that story, the characters stood, you know, stuck with me for these past 12, 13 years or whatever. Always really wanted to do something more with them, but kind of, you know, kind of wrote it off. You know, we were doing other things. So when Bear came back. I was an easy seller. I was like, yes, <laughs> let's do this. Let's jump in. Um, they actually hadn't told me 
that they wanted to do this, they actually spent some time like recording like a demo. Uh, and that's still kicking around here somewhere, but they, they called me up one day and they're like, Hey, we got this idea for you. And you know, here it is. And they played me the dim, played me the dim, played so we're doing this. Let's do this right now. And so that was, that was back in February and we haven't, we haven't stopped since. No. That sounds awesome, man. It's like the perfect lead into my question is tell us now about the actual audio drama and how different is it going to be from the blog post? Andy, Steve, you, you want to like tackle that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it is incredibly different. Uh, <laughs> the uh, blog post we wrote um, just off the cuff. Like we tried to get like a new blog post out in the beginning. It was like every day because they were super short. But as we kind of got into it, you know, they became more lengthy and like took a little bit longer to write. Um, and uh, and that went on for I don't know how many years we spent on it. You know. We, First couple of years we were doing it all the time and then little bits here and there. But um, yeah, the story just went wherever we were feeling that it should go that day. You know, we did some preparation. We talked about it on the phone quite a bit and, you know, should we do this? Should we do that? How about this? Uh, but it just kind of went went off the rails and we'd try and bring it back. So a lot of crazy shit happened on the blog. Uh, mm -hmm. But we wanted to like have it all planned out for this particular thing, the audio podcast. We didn't want to wing it like we did with that so story is very different a lot of the characters are the same we've got some new characters but uh it's a it's extremely new extremely different um, and a lot of fun and a lot of a lot better i think the new characters the the new versions of the characters are still very true to the old versions of the characters i see the same mannerisms and the same speech and the same uh uh, uh just kind of wackiness in mm -hmm. in a lot of the characters that that was you know uh, in, in the original blog storyline. So the characters are, are mostly the same. The situations are, are certainly a little bit different because in an audio drama, we can do different things. Uh, and we, you know, it, it's not so text heavy. Uh, the sound design uh, gives it a, a whole extra dimension and the work that Bear has done on the, on the sound design, you know, the, the, just the background noises, the special effects, uh, the music and whatnot is, it's, it's really extraordinary. So it's, it's, in my mind, if if we had turned the original blogs into into a, a film or a TV show or something like that, this this is what it would sound like if you know if you just kind of shut the picture off. So mm -hmm. one of the one of the most striking differences is the point of view, because both the blogs, Station One Fifty One and Unknown Transmission, were first person, uh, and so you had that kind of narrative. You could be in the characters' heads the entire time, get their thoughts. Um, but this, uh, all we had was audio. And we knew we didn't, right off the bat, I think we decided pretty early on that we didn't want to do the narration, right? right? We didn't want to do like a first person point of view. So uh, we, the challenge in the, you know, was trying to figure out how to do that. And so, um, you know, here's this character, he's in Antarctica, who's, he's by himself, who's he going to talk to? And a lot of the characters that we developed developed from that particular problem. Like there's yeah. an AI, like it's in uh, Wayne, the main character's ear, uh, that came about because of that issue. Like we, we need him to kind of bounce his ideas off of someone or something. And uh, that kind of evolved from that. Yeah, because otherwise he'd be, he'd spend the entire season talking to the damn dog. <laughs> <laughs> or himself. <laughs> or himself, right, talking right. to the walls. You know, or of course you, you go a little stir crazy, you're gonna talk to the walls anyway, so. No. Yeah. I actually got to listen to uh, some of the material today because Bear was kind of the AI is my favorite character by far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I can't Wilkins believe is a bit of a dick. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Well, I, I'm a fan of those big characters. So. <laughs> I, I can't wait to listen any, either. You know, this is like I said, looking forward to all of it. You know, so not only do you have extremely interesting characters who are voice acted fantastically, you know. And you have Antarctica as a backdrop. Can you tell me why you chose Antarctica as a setting for the story? Uh, it's bleak and lonesome and alien. And, and isolated. And, and isolated. And uh, there's no help for miles. And, of course, uh, it's not... It's not the perfect location for a, a radio interferometer, but but uh, there's a reason that Station 151 was built in such a remote location. And spoilers, so we're not going to get into it. But you know, we're we're all you know the 
the, the, the elephant in the room is that we're all fans of John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, 1982 horror sci-fi classic The Thing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's absolutely well worth watching. It is an incredible movie. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of just about everything thing. So, uh, you know, the original Howard Hawks film, Thing from Another World, the sequels, you know. But uh, we we wanted to actually know the original blog was also set in Antarctica. So it, it, it's not like it deviated from the original material. Right. right. Uh, and it just seemed like a great bleak place to stick this one lonely individual to experience all of this horrible shit that comes down on him so uh it was just a no-brainer um plus if we set it anywhere else uh we would have had to do it with other characters and other types of background noises and whatnot so uh just antarctica just some blowing snow and the ai asshole talking to you in your ear all day <laughs> <laughs> well you know and it, it works it absolutely works and um you know it's a testament to you guys to be able to, you know, come up with a good story to tell like that in such a place. So. Thank you. All the voice acting is done by you and um, you and Andy, correct? I actually um, don't do any of it. It's, it's mostly Steve. Steve, you have everybody in this? Steve and, well, and we, Baron. We do have a, uh, I actually, I don't, I don't, I do the intros and endings. I like the, the lead in and lead out to the stuff. I don't do a, uh, anything in the show um we tried excuse me we tried me as the uh uh as a, a pilot character who only shows up like really really rarely but uh uh steve's better at nailing these things um and uh uh but the it, we're actually it, it's steve and then we also are using a uh text-to-speech system for the uh for the ai um it has uh, such a nice, specific type of accent and sound to it, um, while still sounding robotic in, in those in the ways that we have with these uh, AI assistants, right? Um, uh, so you still get that sense, but um, yeah, it's it's a nice way of doing the voice for the for this particular AI. That's that's pretty awesome. So Steve, are, are you in the are you in the mind to give lessons to help people develop voices for acting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the guy to ask. Not, I fell into this uh, hard, uh, you know. But but it's an interesting story because when we first designed this thing, you know, we we had all these ideas and you know special effects and background music and uh, and the storylines and stuff like that, and we were like, shit, who's going to act this? You know. <laughs> We, we, we've got this this cast <clears throat> and and i said to the guys i said look you know i'll take a poke at it but if it's not good enough i'm going to get the fuck out the way because i don't want to negatively impact the podcast by trying to do something that just isn't right and i'm sure everybody can appreciate that um but but we got into it and bear and i worked on uh the voice for wayne who's our main character and and I was trying to 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 lower my natural voice a little bit and and kind of give it a, a slight tweak. And I just told him, I said, look, I can't do this consistently. I can't do this for yeah. 30 minutes at a time, 10, 12 <laughs> episodes. It's not going to work. It's going to break because I'm not a professional. I'm not a singer. I'm not a voice actor. And so I said, I, I'm just going to have to do it my own voice. You know, we'll do yeah. Wayne in my own voice. And then for other characters, we'll 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 try and affect it a little bit. So so that's that's how it works, you know. And I just kind of pulled little performances from places, you know, uh, uh, you know, the um, the helicopter pilot or Doctor Alfieri. I just kind of I would pick somebody, you know, from TV or film or something like that, and try and affect a voice there. And and uh, but no, I don't I don't have any advice on voice work uh, <laughs> other than take care of your voice. I, I've learned a lot about what not to do with your voice. Uh, and uh, because it will wreck, you know, it, it you'll lose oh, yeah. it um, bad. But uh, no, huh? for for a lot of the um, <clears throat> so Steve's voice is pretty much used straight for Wayne. Um, I do actually lower it, I think, by maybe one octave, um, just because I know 
uh, no one likes to hear themselves speak, right? I mean, you, you watch your own videos back or whatever, and you you think, man, I, I don't sound like that. That's so nasally or weird, or it's so much higher or just all of these weird things. But your voice, you know, all filters through all the muscle and bone and fat tissue of your head before it hits your ears. So, of course, it sounds a little bit more bassy and a little bit more. Uh, and so I felt like, you know, just for for Steve's own benefit, because he's going to have to listen to this stuff a lot. I, I, I dropped him just a little bit, though you'd probably never really notice. And then we do some software magic for um, for the other characters. So he is awesome for giving a... Uh, really a different sense of character for a different character and the delivery and all of these things. Um, but he is not himself magically changing his voice. He's changing his delivery mm -hmm. and the way in which he, he speaks. Um, but uh, there's a lot of software stuff happening to, to make these characters distinct and sound like different people and all that. You have to tell me about that software bear. <laughs> we can, we can, First of all, Steve and Bear, you guys are absolutely killing it. Like I said, I got to listen to some of the stuff today, and it was absolutely fantastic. And to prove my point, Bear was kind enough, your guys, the three of you were kind enough to give us a clip of a little bit of the first episode to share with our audience. So before I tell Al to play the clip, is there anything you guys want to tell us about or maybe set up the scene to let our audience know what we're actually listening to? Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, the helicopter ride, right, right. Bear? Yep. So this is in between uh, uh, the helicopter pilot Richard Johns, uh, which is my voice, and uh, Wayne, uh, which is my voice. And mm -hmm. uh, in this scene, uh, Wayne has arrived on the ice or on Antarctica, the continent, and he is being uh, piloted uh, over to Station One Fifty One by uh, Richard Johns, uh, our pilot. And as they are, and the uh, the idea for this first episode was like uh, when we were writing, it was like you know we have to set this this up. We have to let listeners know who Wayne is, why he's here, who he's working for, and what what are the risks. And so we we wrote this this one episode, which actually kind of blew up and became a larger episode. We thought it was going to be short, but. Uh, uh, it's it's an opportunity for Wayne and the pilot to talk a little bit about what life on the ice is like. And as they near Station 151, the pilot starts to talk about the place and its history and why it's so weird. Uh, I think that's the right clip, right, Bear? Uh, I think my, we might be a little earlier back, but we'll 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 hear the clip and then uh, yeah, this right. is this is their ride. They're them coming in. All right, guys, uh, uh, absolute uh, cycle number <laughs> first, a sneak peek of Station 151. Al, take it away. Have you ever heard of the Telders Corporation? Telders, like Michael Telders, the, the weirdo billionaire. That's the guy. This is his thing? Oh, uh, you know, I'm not saying that. I'm just curious if you've heard of him. I gotcha. That, uh, that NDA's kicking in. Yeah, and I, and I have no idea what you're talking about, right? Uh, didn't Michael Telders live in a submarine off the coast of Florida for like three years? Well, it, he didn't. He picked 30 men and women to start an underwater commune on the sea floor. It didn't go too well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they all started murdering each other. Yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. So, speaking of that, it kind of begs the question. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure... I'm not joining some doomed commune down here. I'm going to be running the place solo for about a year, and then I rotate back to Yale afterward. Oh, you got to be fucking kidding me. You're going to winter over down here by yourself? That is the plan. You know that's crazy, right? Oh, it can't be that bad. I'm I'm not exactly an extrovert anyways, so I'm, I'm actually kind of looking forward to some alone time. <sighs> alone time? Wait, alone time is a couple hours to yourself with a mystery novel, and a cup of hot tea on a Sunday night. One year at the bottom of the world with no one else? That's a recipe for madness. You think so? Oh, hell yeah. Even the greats went crazy down here. Ernest Shackleton, the legendary explorer, he claimed a shadow figure followed him and his crew around after they lost their ship. And he said little voices tried to tempt him out into the frozen wilderness at night. What? Yeah. And members of Robert Scott's expedition heard the same 
voices calling to them from outside their huts, and they reported knocking on windows, but no one was ever there. And those guys weren't even alone. Wayne, I think what you're doing is fucking nuts. Yeah, I, could, I can see how you think that, and it's pretty screwed up. <laughs> That's crazy. I would never stay alone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is true as well. That's all taken from the history books. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Yeah, the that, sound uh, quality is fantastic, guys. That, that, yeah, I don't think I would stay anywhere like cool. that for a year. I might, you know, I might get away for a little while, but not a year. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, Chad is mentioning how they can't tell Steve that those are two different, they think it's two different people voice acting. Yeah. So I, I can't believe it. Yeah. yeah. Software magic. <laughs> <laughs> and again, a great performance by Steve. I, I am not going to ever discount that. So, you know, very early on, uh, uh, Andy had mentioned that Steve and I actually, we did this demo, right? Uh, and this is all before Andy even knew about it. Uh, we thought, you know, we wanted to get Andy really invested in this idea. So he and I worked on this for a couple of weeks. We put together a demo and, you know, maybe at some point uh, as the, uh, as this goes on the, the station 151, we, we may end up releasing this as like some kind of special, uh, special episode or, or something, but um, uh, we did a lot of great stuff, but there was a lot of mistakes that we also made. And um, uh, you know, some of the stuff was uh, in the way in which we were trying to approach it and some of the stuff was delivery. And I, I was pushing Steve to try these different things with his voice and to really kind of do this, these, maybe these things to kind of help get more into the character. And I'm so glad we abandoned all of that. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was a good exercise, but what we're doing here is so much better. Yeah. So that, um, that, that actually is pretty awesome. So we've already kind of establish that John Carpenter thing is a, is a thing with you, you know, because it gives us that kind of vibe. But in the same breath, is there anything else that was an inspiration for this concept? Um, I would just jump in just real quick. Um, I'm going to let the other two answer on the inspirations and all that. Um, on the thing itself, um, and also in that we, we are selling this as uh, sci-fi horror, um, I think it'd be good to just uh, make sure that people know that season one is predominantly sci-fi. There is probably some dark elements with it and everything else, but you may end up watching, you know, listen to the whole series and go, well, where's, where's the horror in here? There's, there's weirdness and the weird, um, not the MCG book, the weird, but the weird <laughs> as a genre and as a setting is, is within the horror realm. Um, so this, this is very much, weird in that way um but it will get more and uh, uh darker and more horrific as we kind of go on into later seasons but season one is probably extremely light like a dusting perhaps of horror um and i would also say that you know we talk about the thing but the thing really isn't so much of an inspiration for the show i uh the, people shouldn't be expecting to have uh lovecraftian elements or um, cosmic horror or any of those kinds of things. This is very much a different, different kind of thing. So the thing really isn't probably an influence on the show as much as it's just probably an influence as uh, on us as a, you know, as just an awesome uh, movie or a uh, couple of movies as a story, all of those things. So the, the setting, I think, was yeah, it was really it was really big for me. I love that setting, yeah, and just kind of the aloneness. You know, having someone there that wasn't the thing, but having someone there alone and just having to deal with it. Um, that's not where this story goes, but that was kind of one of the original concepts. I think back in two thousand nine, uh, when Steve and I were talking on the phone, he was he was pitching this idea to me of. Um, a, uh, I don't want to get too in depth here, but a guy that was you know, a space captain. He was out in space, and he was near a wormhole. Steve, stop me if I'm going too far with spoilers. Uh, <laughs> and uh, right past that, <laughs> it's and all ruined. He was lost, right? He <laughs> couldn't. He couldn't make his way back to Earth. He had some problem with some crew. I won't talk about that. Uh, but he was lost, and he couldn't get back. And now he was just alone in space. And I was like. Well, you know, he needs somebody to talk to. How about if, like, through the wormhole, um, you could talk to a guy in Antarctica or something like that? And that's kind of where it, it kind of developed. It developed from it's that. It's a shared experience between the two yeah. characters in, in that both of them were stranded, um, not necessarily willingly, but not unwillingly at the same time. 
Uh, and that's uh, that was my original idea. I wanted to uh, put this person out there, you know, this lost in space, Robin Robinson Caruso, whatever you want to call it, uh, out there. And I wanted to to kind of see if if you had to experience that, how quickly you know things would devolve. You know, yeah. uh, your sanity, uh, your willingness to live or survive. And uh, and Andy just kind of picked up on that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what what if what if we had a guy in a similar situation in present day uh, who's stranded in Antarctica doing this, you know, this horrible job. And at the same time, he's receiving these transmissions from this guy who's experiencing this out in space. And um, and so it kind of took off from there. But then there were a lot of shared elements between the two stories and the, the, the protagonist begins to at, at one point react to some of the things that the antagonist Andy's character had set in place um back in the day so it it uh, but you know bears right there it's you know the thing is is a great movie and there are aspects of the thing that that we won't let go of but it's it's not it's not really a horror thing type podcast although there is in season two some super <laughs> weird super weird shit that's going to happen so that there, there may be more tweaks yeah well yeah. You know, the one thing you guys are saying that the biggest thing that could be horror in itself is just the isolation. You know, I mean, when you, if you, if I don't know where you guys are going to go, I can't wait to find out. But, you know, just the thought of when your mind decides to start playing tricks on you because you're alone, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty stoked about what you guys are doing. And it, it, it's great stuff. Before I ask my question, you guys, hearing you guys talk made, made me think of this. Um, what's the creative writing process like? Because I, I, I hear Steve, you when you mentioned Andy, is it always like the bouncing of ideas and then you're finalized and you come up with a concept or what's that process, that writing process look like? Uh, the process is is a lot of uh, me uh, coming up with ideas and Andy shooting them down. <laughs> <laughs> and then i that come up happened. with more ideas and then he doesn't return my calls and then <laughs> and then he comes together with a script so uh, yeah. no the process you know andy and i love to write and we, we wrote together we wrote together for two years on this story um mm -hmm. back in the day and we love to write together um but we've we've been separated. Andy's in Scottsdale. I'm in Kansas City. So we're we're separated by great lengths. And uh, uh, so getting a chance to come together on this project was was a chance for us to kind of work and share together. And I and I was kidding him up front. But uh, the process is a lot of us sharing ideas about what needs to happen, what has to happen, and where we're going to go. You know, begin with the ending in mind, and then. We uh, we tried everything, and you know, as Bear said, we learned a lot as we went through the process. But uh, we tried having like regular scheduled writers meetings four times a week, you know, between mm. six and eight p.m. And man, did that suck! And so, because yeah. Andy's more of a night owl, I'm more of a morning person. So it's a lot of shooting ideas back and forth through Slack. Uh, you know, we've got a Slack channel set up for uh, for Station One Fifty One. And, uh, you know, like here, how do we how do we get from this point to this point with this character? And and what are the three most logical things that will happen if this happens uh, to, you know, at this point in the story? And so uh, and then it just kind of comes together. But we'll write things and shoot them back and forth in just, you know, Word documents and whatnot and, until they're they're finished. But Andy has taken point on a lot of season one. I, I did a lot of work on episode one and. Uh, uh, a few others, and then uh, we've got kind of a special episode that's been kicking around that I'm working on. But uh, but Andy has been point man for for a lot of the content, a lot of the scripts, which is interesting because then I have to read them, you know. And so, it's, <laughs> Anthony, it was it was a Anthony's question and your answer just made, triggered another thought for me, you know, to ask you guys. So. Does this story have a beginning, middle, and end? Is there like a specific number of seasons you, you foresee? Mm. Uh, Andy? Probably yes and no. Have that. Yeah. We do Go have ahead. that sort of worked out. Yeah, we've got, what, three seasons yeah. in mind? Five? Yeah. <laughs> five. Yeah. Well, we, we go back and forth, right? But I, I, I think 
uh, my recollection, ultimately, it, it kind of really resides mostly with Andy, I think, in, in this case. Um, and uh, S- Steve and my uh, involvement is is probably more on a producer level thing of, well, we uh, maybe we're going too fast here or maybe we're, we're, we're getting to that too quickly or, or not quickly enough. It's, it's, it's probably more of those kinds of things that we kind of push and pull on Andy, but I think ultimately the length of the stuff is going to be uh, more up to Andy. Um, but my le- re- last recollection was we were talking like five seasons to really kind of get us fully to where uh, we know something big happens. Um, but there's room for it to go beyond that. Um, it really depends on the success of it, of course. Yeah, we have a whole yeah, extra have- side of the story to tell, in fact. Yeah. We have the whole, we have the, you know, Steve and I did meet, you know, early on, we did the, those writers meetings, you know, four or five times a week, you know, a couple hours, like you said, um, for each one. And uh, we learned a lot, you know, not only how to work together, but how to put something like this together. And we, we incorporated software. There's a software por- program called Miro, which you can use to kind of like create stickies like you would with like the stickies that are behind Steve on the wall. Um, and so we have kind of the seasons planned out in that format in the software. Um, but we would, you know, kind of plan everything out. And then uh, at night I would write and write and write and write and get to that, that, that column and be like, oh, that doesn't really work. And I'd have to back up and come up with some new idea. And Baron Steve would be like, oh, that's way too fucking out there. Don't do that. And so I would that happened a couple times. Again, tried something up. Yeah. We, yeah, I did almost go off on some pretty crazy, crazy tangents, but uh, uh, yeah, it was um, the writing process was uh, very much like that, very, very front end heavy on the kind of the collaboration, and then um, toward the end, I was just you know writing script after script after script, uh, and then during our regular weekly meetings, we would take the scripts, we would do table reads. Yep. Uh, Steve and Bear would read most of the time and I would just take notes. And then that night I would go in and, and, and tweak it. And then we'd do another read and just rinse and repeat. I think that would awesome. be an important uh, note for, for anybody thinking about getting into podcasting is that the table read part of it was the most helpful. I've, yeah. I've been on a couple of other projects lately uh where it's just kind of like you know show up script in hand you know read and they were good people and great podcasts and 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 it turned out well but i think the practice uh going into each of these uh was extremely helpful and andy would sit there and give me notes like no he's you know he's a lot angrier than that you know Mm -hmm. get hot uh or you know he's despondent he's tired he's just slurring his words you know just really drag ass like you're, you know, hung over as shit. And, uh, <laughs> and so having that is, uh, and, you know, Hollywood, I'm sure knows this, but uh, uh, the table read and just really, because we do what, sometimes three, four, five reads for a script, yeah. Uh, yeah. depending on, you know, how tricky the language is. And uh, the, uh, the story is a little tech heavy at times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andy's, uh, I mean, he's a tech wizard and he would throw a, a lot of um, jargon, technical jargon into yeah. And I was just staring at it like, what the hell am I saying? You know, I can't even <laughs> pronounce this shit. And uh, so it, it was really helpful. In fact, we've got, we've got uh, an episode or two to record and, uh, and there's, uh, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's that's actually tricky. a perfect lead in for my next question. No, when we heard the the clip, right? You know, we know it, it was a fantastic clip. It, I I think it it shows the work that all your guys are are talking about. You know, in that short little clip. So can you tell us a little bit about the production process? And Steve was just touching on it, but what advice would you give someone trying to produce an audio drama? Bear. Um, yeah. Um, so. Uh, you know, the first step, of course, is to get the uh, uh, the voice read right. Um, and so uh, um, uh, because we're distributed, um, uh, Steve handles the recordings of the of the voice work that he needs to record. Um, he uh, does that in his sound booth, which happens to be his closet. Um, and the reason it's in his closet is because you have all of the hanging clothes. You have a carpeted floor. And it kills the echo. 
um and it it's 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 clean he has a good closet for it um and it it just works really well like i i don't think uh he and i could get together in a sound booth and have it come out cleaner i mean i'm sure we could but it would be so subtly different that it would make really no difference in the end he's he's given me really good clean audio um and that's such a big thing because if the audio itself is not clean if it has like if i was trying to re actually record audio say in this room um you know without having my uh, uh podcast mic and i'm i'm speaking right up into the mic and and, and everything super close and even then you're still going to get a little bit of echo you still have that potential um i i can't clean out that echo sound it's it's there i can do some tricks to minimize it a little bit but it's um uh getting clean audio is important but from there i take it i'll do an editing pass on it um essentially i i find all the good clips that i like the the best takes i get those kind of lined up um because uh, most of this audio is back and forth between uh, two different characters uh, most of them right now are uh wayne the main character and wilkins the this ai um that uh i will edit those two together uh for what feels like a fairly natural flow but there are times where i know something's happening as a sound effect or something else so i'll try to leave some space in here but i edit that together in an audio program i actually use uh, adobe audition for most of this work it's part of the adobe creative cloud suite and it's a it's an easy it's an easy program to pick up. Uh, I like it better for this kind of editing than, say, Logic Pro or uh, uh, Pro Tools, something like that. Um, um, once I have the 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 voices strung together, then I start layering in the effects. You know, I I know there's going to be some environmental sound um, just as like a base. Um, uh, for the clip that we played, it's helicopter for the most part. They're getting into a helicopter, so they're on the tarmac, and the helicopter is kind of in that slow idle mode. So I have a, a audio file that uh, that I was able to find that has that that sound, and then it ramps up for them taking off. Um, I have the the characters sounding like they're under uh, cans and on a mic talking to each other, um, and so there's some audio processing on the voices to make that happen. There's uh, some noise gating um uh, a high pass filter uh, and a few other things that just kind of help to kind of give it that that kind of cheap headset kind of sound to it um and uh and yeah you know there's there's times where like in the first episode Wayne is given something so I want the sound where he's receiving like he he has a box and he opens this box and um and so I you know I for the most part I find these uh sound effects from various sound libraries. We subscribe to one in particular that works really well for us. I have a sound library from uh, probably uh, late 90s or early 2000s that came on a 40 uh, CD uh, disc set. It's called the General 6000. And boy, when we bought that, we thought we were hot shit. Um, I think we paid like two grand for it or something like that. Um, and uh, and finally, I was able to actually start using those. But, uh, um, but you know, you find find those sounds that you need. Very rarely do I find a sound that's like, okay, I need a box opening. It may not actually be that that's the sound of it. There's a scene in episode one that people will hear soon because we actually hit the next stretch goal. And the next stretch goal is that we are going to release episode one and two to backers. So if you're a backer, you're going to be able to hear that in a day or two. Um, but uh, there's a scene where Wayne gets into the helicopter. And he's, you know, you can hear him sitting, but I don't have a sound of someone getting into a helicopter. So I find something that kind of sounds somewhat mechanical and sounds like maybe someone is sitting down. And, you know, it's it's the magic, I think, of of this stuff uh, and what you were talking about before, Dean, about going back to these really old like 1950s uh, radio dramas and that kind of stuff that. You don't need this sound to be exact to what it is you just need that illusion of it sounding like that and the context of it all and as long as it feels right it is right and it creates that theater of the mind and so there's a lot of things like that that uh i think really kind of brings it brings it together is finding that magic sound of yeah this this would fit for that this is going to convey that so we don't always have to say i am now sitting i am now opening this thing i am now pushing this button 
you hear it, you feel it because you're there with it. That's pretty awesome, Barry, just to give, you know, people kind of a highbrow overview of sound engineering in general, you know, it's really, it's really nice to hear that, you know, because you kind of touched on the question I'm going to ask, so I was getting to, but. Uh, hold on, D, before you ask your question, you have any advice for someone wanting to get in? And I just, I want to do a follow-up question. Um, how long does it take to produce one episode, like? Between... Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, advice, I would say that there's probably, we are in the golden age, I think, of um, being able to learn anything you ever want to learn. YouTube is going to probably cover 90% of what you ever really want to learn. And if you're not going to find it there, um, there's going to be other resources to get more in depth with it. Um, for me, uh, I had enough of a audio background in that I've touched enough stuff that I'm familiar with how tracks work and individual track controls. Um, but uh, in, in many ways, it works a lot like how video works when you have multiple tracks of video. Um, but uh, you know, there's great resources to learn uh, various audio programs. There's great free programs. There's great cheap programs. Um, you know, if you're interested, uh, find something that works for you. I think Steve. Uh, is using uh, an app for recording that's cheap or actually free, um, and uh, um, you know it it works great for for that need. It would be an editor that would be fine for most people. Um, audacity, yeah. audacity, right? Um, but as far as how long does it take to produce, it's probably it depends on the episode. Um, if it's if it's a quick episode, it's probably eight to 12 hours. Um, if it's long, it's probably closer to 16 to 24 hours. Um, I've tried timing it. Um, I produced episode four. That was the one that I timed and it actually happened to be one that went pretty quickly. So it gave me a bad snapshot. I really struggled on episode three um, because they're inside and they're outside and there's a introduction of another character. Um, uh, um, and so, and there's a lots of sound effects for that other character and finding all of these things. And they go in and out of doors frequently and there's sound effects for those and, uh, and they're walking. So of course you want footsteps for walking, especially in something like this to give you that atmosphere. I don't have to give you everything that happens, but you got to hear the footsteps. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I try to think through how many footsteps would it take to get to this place? And so there's all these little stupid things that you, you kind of get hung up on and it slows you up, but uh, yeah, it's not quick. If you're trying to, I think, do this level of detail, but uh, I, I think it's worth it for what we're doing. You, you know, it's been, it's funny what got me thinking is like, I can imagine you going, why does Andy have to have him walk from room to room? There's so many doors. <laughs> now I gotta find a sound effect for every single one of these damn doors. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Just wait until episode 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, episode 10 is going to be a big one. So, uh, like I said, I had my, my question. Um, uh, you guys started the Kickstarter with season one. Okay, it's pretty much almost completed. And you just said that, um, you know, people are going to see uh, episode one and two sooner than not because of uh being a backer but yep. do you guys have a release schedule for the entire first season oh yeah yep so uh we're planning on uh or our our plan is that uh episodes one and two will hit all the popular podcast platforms we're already set up on all of them so if you're subscribed to say like apple podcasts or spotify or whatever you can go to Spotify, you can find us there and you can already follow us or subscribe to us. So when we put out the new episode, you're going to get them. They're there. Uh, it's free. Anybody can listen to this thing when it comes out. But uh, December 6th, we are dropping episodes one and two. And we wanted to do both of them together because um, uh, episode one is a lot of fun and a lot of information. But And it ends with some really nice weirdness, but episode two is where we really start introducing a lot of the weirdness. And so we really wanted to make sure you kind of got the full experience. Um, and then it'll be weekly thereafter. Um, so it will, it'll take us into, I think, February or, or so. Um, I think we have some 
some special that we might want to interject. It's actually going to be the next stretch goal that we'll be talking about on the Kickstarter here soon. But uh, we have obviously funded. Um, the Kickstarter itself is not there to fund us doing the podcast. Podcast is happening. Um, this really, we've already invested so much money into this and, and time and everything else that we thought it would at least be an opportunity for us to be able to hopefully recoup some of these costs and help us keep going with future future seasons so would, would it also be up on youtube as well or only on the podcast um, it is the plan to release episodes on youtube as well um it won't be uh i'll use the uh, playlist feature so it kind of keeps everything in order but it's not a it's not a podcast platform in that you i mean you can subscribe to our channel and please subscribe to our channel uh you guys know how uh, how much you kind of have to work to get subscribers and followers and all of that, right? It's it's always this hustle just to try to get just two or three more followers. And so subscribe to us on, on YouTube. We would appreciate it. And you will be able to listen to it there if you want. I'm going to have some visuals as part of it, but it's going to be really simple, much like our trailer, um, uh, because I can and I might as well. But Oh, the visual work. The, the art, like the, the art that you gave us for this overlay, this is all fantastic. I mean, I could expect, just let's be honest, if Bear, you gave us some crappy art, I'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually known <laughs> for finding the perfect art. So yeah, and you actually outdid yourself with this because this is awesome. Well, I, I, you know, I... Uh, I can't I can't take credit for it. Most of the stuff or some of the stuff that I have sent to you have come through uh, using some AI art generation. And it's, you know, uh, we talked about that. I think last time we got together, it's, uh, you know, there's definitely some pros and cons with it. Um, uh, you know, if our if our Kickstarter ends up having a, a lot of success, I uh, have some line items in there for some future stretch goals where we could start paying for some original art. I obviously work with some really awesome artists uh, uh, and I have done so now for many years. And I'd love to give them work and get some very specific pieces illustrated for us. Um, but it's it's not cheap. And, uh, you know, right now where the Kickstarter is sitting, uh, we've just crossed over the $2,000 mark and that's awesome and I love it. Um, but that still doesn't actually recoup our costs yet. So it, it's gonna have to be a higher goal for us to start thinking about getting custom art. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, I some of these AI generators, it's there's a lot of cool stuff you can generate. Uh, I really try to make sure that I'm not doing things that I feel like that's jerky, like using artist names as part of prompts or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I don't want to rip off like existing art, but there, there's a lot of layers in that discussion and it's not worth it here. So hmm. uh, oh, somebody in chat suggested, which I think is a great idea, is that when it goes live, we'll host a Cypher Unlimited listening party uh, so we can actually a whole server, you know, whoever wants to could sit down and listen, we'll listen to it together and talk about it. Yeah, Make awesome. Friday nights. Yeah. <laughs> we might even we might even do it on multiple nights because all of us have kind of a different schedule. <laughs> you know, I could do Friday nights maybe. Speaking of Kickstarter, you guys, you know, just talk to, you know, you pretty much kind of answer this almost, right? It, you know, you're using it to produce Station 151, but can you talk about the challenges and the costs to produce a quality show like this? Do you have future goals or expectations beyond this Kickstarter for Station 151? I absolutely, I believe we do. Uh, <laughs> the, in, in terms of costs, and and bears right you know we we've, we've sunk uh you know a, a lot of our own money and uh and certainly a load of our own time into this but um without i you know i i can't figure the numbers but i want to say that it's not terribly expensive to do something like this i mean yeah you're going to end up buying equipment you know you buy a decent microphone uh maybe you you invest in some software uh some sound effects libraries uh, maybe, you know, you hire, uh, some voice talent, uh, and we've done that. We've hired some great voice talent, uh, to help bring things to life. Um, uh, but, uh, but the cost I think was, was very reasonable, but, but it's still, it was out of pocket and, and Kickstarter is going to, like Bear said, you know, if, if it, if it hits high enough, you know, we'll recoup those costs 
And that will certainly make us feel a lot better about going into the next season, you know, because like, all right, well, you know, that wasn't a bomb. We didn't lose, you know, <laughs> thousands of dollars, you know, and now we're going to do it again uh, on top of, you know, countless man hours. But uh, yeah, we've got, we've got, we definitely got plans for future seasons. We've got definitely have plans for uh, extending uh, what, what we're uh, putting into station 151, more voice talent, more artwork, more, more, uh, you know, uh, rewards for for kickstarter goals and stuff like that uh we've got big ideas uh but we're trying to stay very conservative with with what we're spending on right now bear does that yeah. kind of like sum up or do you have something to add to that no i think it's that's about right i mean we have some side story stuff that we'd love to explore some stuff uh maybe coming up as part of some po possible future uh stretch goals if we if we get to there um but uh you know Ideas are the easy thing. We have lots of ideas. Um, we've, we, I don't know how many times we've come up and said, oh yeah, we got to do this. We got to do that. We've talked about doing some commercials for the, uh, for the Telders Corporation or for a product that's within these things and on all these other side stories, but it's just, um, it's just time, you know, and uh, this is not our job. <laughs> I mean, you well, know, we're doing this uh, uh, purely on our own time and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot to manage. Yeah, yeah, hopefully before. it'll be our job at some point and we can do all <laughs> those commercials and all the holidays. There you go. I would love that. Yeah, I would love to go nuts. Yeah, well, I hear Netflix and guys, Hulu are always looking for new people. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to call it right now, just so you guys know. I'm, I'm telling you how successful you guys are going to be. Probably in about two and a half, three years, you're going to be getting a call or you're going to be pitching this to Netflix. It's going to be a show. We're getting five seasons of this on Netflix or Hulu, you know. Remember, I told you, you guys can hire me. Since <laughs> <laughs> this was Cypher Unlimited, I wouldn't mind seeing the RPG. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Come on, it's you know, one fifty one the game. Yep. Hey, yeah, if uh, you know, if we can have some success, and uh, uh, Money Cook Games wants to do a a game off of this, you know, they know where to find me. Clearly, <laughs> so. Go well, Bear, uh, like I said, I'm always available to help whatever you need. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, Anthony, oh, no, before you ask a question, just to, so we can make clear, please go out and back this. I, I personally, I, I felt so bad because I forgot to back it, and I knew I was going to back <laughs> it up. I rushed and backed it before the interview, but please, please go out and back this project. You know, I love me personally. I love seeing projects come to life and to see, to help those that want to put out a creative project. And, you know, they're not asking for much. If you look at the, the, the actual pledge levels, everything is pretty affordable. And it's, um, you know, you, you, you're creating something that for you personally, you're going to enjoy. But not only that, you, you, you're, you're opening it up for so many other people that may not be able to help afford to pitch in you know, and they can also enjoy it. So, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I, I, I backed it, and uh, I hope everyone else, not only on our server, but whoever's watching this on YouTube, you know, you know, throw a couple bucks their way because this is this is, looks like it's going to be a, a hell of a great adventure, and I, I want to be part of it. Thank you. Well, I, I'll, I'll second that, you know, because I saw I, when it went live, I was at work, and I couldn't get my backer in, and that's literally what I was doing. <laughs> Was making sure I backed it right now, you know, because I want I want all the stickers and everything. So I'm I'm, I'm 100 in, and like I said, um, I think this is a brilliantly creative project. But with that being said, before I, uh, we move into audience questions, because we're gonna let the audience ask you guys a couple of questions, do you guys have anything else you'd like our audience to know about Station 151? You know, or is there any other project that you guys want to talk about or anything like that? Oh, there's so much to say, but so many spoilers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. It's uh, it's going to be a wild ride. It really is. <clears throat> and uh, fans of the original uh, blog series are going to love it because they're going to get to see gonna their favorite characters come to life. Uh, people who have uh, are just joining us for the first time are going to be in for a hell of a journey, uh, and from season one to season two, I mean, we we kind of have an idea 
of where this goes and it's going to be bonkers as shit so uh <laughs> strap in enjoy the ride uh connect with us on you know social media you got questions you want to you want to share uh we'd love to hear uh but uh that's that's about all we can really say about station 151 without getting too deep into spoiler territory and we want yeah, everybody yeah. to experience it fresh if you want uh just like a quick overview of the characters involved um we came up with a, a series of like kind of character dossiers that you know steve's been putting up on instagram instagram site station underscore 151 uh, you can find all of our social links and everything on the website station 151.com but those character bios are really cool uh, yeah, you yeah. know you get kind of the, like you know the images kind of how we feel like, like they may look and the kind of a bio and everything and that'll get you set for um, prepared for the podcast when and it drops. For, yeah. nice and for everyone out there on in youtube land and everybody on the stream right now those links are also uh up already for you so you right. can you know jump there and grab hold to them too so you don't have to hop online and look for anything we are going to have all the links you know beneath you know for you i mean it, it's on its chat and right i said now. it's on the stream i know i said yeah. that and um, if you want to watch this on youtube it'll definitely be in the description as well right. excellent the only thing i was going to add is um uh, last week i was you know when i was thinking hey uh, we're going to go on cypher unlimited and what are we going to talk about and uh um and I had something that just dawned on me that I thought was kind of a just a really weird uh, coincidence, really. But um, and I'll, I'll keep it really, really short so we can get to those questions. Um, but I I had this dawning realization that I think uh, I don't think this is overstated that without Station One Fifty One, the and unknown transmission, uh, without these two guys writing this blog fiction, I don't think I'd actually be here at MCG. And the reason I say that is that so uh, Steve and I go way back. We're we're friends from uh, I think 90s. early nineties, uh, uh, ninety one, ninety two, somewhere in there. Um, uh, from uh, University of Kansas, uh, we actually didn't go to school together. Our uh, girlfriends at the time uh, knew each other from work and blah blah blah. But Steve and I became friends and stayed friends, and we had often talk about writing and what we are reading and he knew i uh was into writing uh, i knew he was into writing but but nothing ever came of that for me all right i had I, I i stopped writing for a long time but he started telling me about these uh uh the stuff that uh, he and his brother were writing and i thought wow this is really cool and i was really into it and i thought they were doing a really cool cool thing um but because of this writing steve uh i'm sure andy did too but i know steve got really involved in uh uh, the uh, world of Twitter and writers. And so he started uh, knowing and following a bunch of uh, writers that were on Twitter at the time. This is 2009, 2010. And sometime in 2010, he hit me up and said, hey, I saw this call for an anthology that I think you'd really enjoy writing for. And it's called Rigor Mortis. This is essentially zombie erotica. And I thought, fuck yeah, I want to write a story for that. <laughs> I actually wrote five stories for, for uh, uh, um, Rigor Mortis. Uh, one story got published in there. Um, I was actually the starting story in the book, which is usually a uh, kind of a big, big thing, right? You, the, you want to lead on a good foot. And so um, I was writing under a pseudonym at the time. So if anybody ever goes, picks up that book, I'm Jacob Ruby. That's my story. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so I wrote that, got it published, um, and, you know, like a big light bulb went off and I, I started writing a whole bunch, um, started connecting with the people like who had published me. Um, uh, Jane Gates is one of them. She's known in the uh, gaming community, um, as well, but, uh, but because of that, I formed these connections with writers, which ultimately led me to be connected with Shauna. Um, Shauna and Sh I worked with Shauna on a book that uh, uh, she kickstarted called uh, Geek Love. James Gates was involved with that and some other people that I knew. Um, but that's how I got to know it. Uh, Shauna, uh, she and I worked uh, uh, closely on getting that book done, which then led me to them finally at one point coming back to me and saying, hey, we're looking for an art director. Do you know of one? And without Station 151, I probably wouldn't have gotten back into writing at that time. And even if I had, I might not have been connected with those same people. And there's very direct stepping stones between this and this original endeavor 
to me being here and me knowing you guys. So how about that? Yeah, well, you mentioned that um, off air. I, I really want to hear that story. That That is yeah. so awesome. Right. It's such yeah. a coincidence. Right. But it's, uh, um, you know, sometimes synergy is synergy is a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Or synchronicity. <laughs> Maybe it's synchronicity is a thing. But synchronicity, anyway. synergy, they are, they are kind yep. of the same thing. Yep. Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Okay. Uh, Cat Who Walks asks, have you guys thought about using deep fake audio for any of the voices? Um, so it's, what we are using is not that, um, but it's probably adjacent to that. Um, I figure we'll talk more about that, uh, maybe after season one, I I don't want to get too hung up on the, the technical aspects, um, just because I think, uh, I really want people to hear this as, as a thing and just and experience it without trying to think, oh, that's that same guy doing this voice and always doing that voice and trying to kind of piece it out and see how it's done. Experience it. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be doing seasons two and three and four. Um, I think, you know, we're, 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 um, uh, we're, you know, I, I think it's moving along really well. Kickstarter is really helping that. And, uh, and we'll talk more, I think, in detail about some more technical stuff uh, in, uh, in future seasons and all that. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So the graphic novelty wife asks, on a scale of one to MCG, how weird is Station 151? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty weird. Pretty weird. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it does be weird, yeah. It, uh, it, I, I think each episode, uh, increases the weirdness. Uh, it just keeps turning it up and, uh, it definitely, uh, uh, does it go to 11? It probably goes to 11, at least a few times in the first season. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and definitely beyond that and it, it, with what we have planned for a season two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's a healthy fun. balance. It doesn't it's get like... Well, you guys, I, I can tell you, uh, me personally, and I know these guys probably feel the same way, I'm excited. This is, you know, right up my wheelhouse, right up my alley. I love I love that creative process, you know, being a writer myself. It just is one of those things. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being on our show, and thank you so much for doing this great project because this is awesome, and you guys are very inspiring to, I think, a lot of people out here. Thank you for having us. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, How absolutely. How many days do we have left on the Kickstarter? When's the Kickstarter end? Uh, it ends December 9th. Yeah. Oh, so we well, got about 20 like days. 20 days left to go, right? yeah. yeah, just started yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah, 22 days. Yeah. I, need, I knew. Brought their back in. Yeah. Yeah. I knew we needed to get past Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, it, that just eats up everybody's money, right? But uh, we end a week after all of that, so uh, or uh, no, two weeks after all that, something like that. Um, so, and you hit a couple of stretch goals already, right? We've hit now three stretch goals. We just hit the uh, the third one uh, during this uh, during this chat. So the third one, it, and the third one is that we will release these two episodes that we've been talking about early to backers. So if you have backed it uh, here in a day or two, we're going to send you a, uh, a private update that only backers can see that has links to the to the clips or to the episodes. And uh, yeah, hopefully everybody will love it. Oh, so yeah. So you guys got to go in and back this because uh, I'm going to listen to my episodes and I'm not going to share with anybody. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> telling any BMO ever going to enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, guys. We really appreciate it. We learned so much about Station 151. I'm even more excited now than I was before. Um, I'm excited to see where you guys take this journey at because it sounds like it's, once you said it's going to hit level 11 weird in the <laughs> first season. So now I'm even more excited. You know, So thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. And please, please... <laughs> Go, go to the Kickstarter page. Once again, go to the link. Check them out on YouTube if you're still on the site and listen to the clips they have there. There, 
they have a a, a, a promo of audio. It's a trailer, audio. Yeah. trailer. Uh, yeah. So you, you can get a general idea what the show's about. And um, yeah, if you like it, go back it. You know, because I definitely will, and um, I'm I'm preaching to everyone else to do the same. Back to project. Back to project. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so like, much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. If you like us and you like what we do, join the Cypher Unlimited Discord server for all things Monica Games. We have the largest fan-run server for everything MCG. We have over 4,000 members and growing. If um, Discord is not for you, join our Facebook group. It's not as big as our Discord, but there's still great conversations being had there as well. Um, if you want to help us out financially in, in any way, give us a little donation on Kofi. Our videos are always free but it helps us out with little things like Zoom calls. Or visit the Cypher Unlimited online store and pick up some cool Cypher Unlimited merch like me and Dean got on. <laughs> Am I missing anything? Oh, give us a like, share, subscribe here <laughs> on Twitch or go to or YouTube. YouTube. Oh, please subscribe there. Yeah, we hit a thousand subs on YouTube and we're eternally grateful. Let's make it 2,000, guys. And last but not least, we love you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, I think that without further ado, you know, once again, Bear, Steve, Andy, thank you all so much for coming on the show. Thank you all so much, you know, for doing such a great project and sharing with us, you know, us kind of being first partakers and all of that. That clip was great. And everybody out there in the interwebs, we love you guys as well, like, An like Anthony said. So from us at the CU, we will see you later.